Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Daily Reflections with Chris. This is, I'm Chris, and and this is, uh, we're going to read all of, all of our Daily Reflections, right, for today. And today is May 23rd, so today is a whole year that uh, Daily Reflections with Chris, this YouTube channel, was born on much, much on a night like like it was a night like this right it was late in the evening it was somewhere between 11 p.m and 12 a.m and i was actually downstairs at the clubhouse but now i'm up here in in my actual apartment and man i'm so grateful i'm so grateful that it's been a whole year a year ago i felt similar to how i feel right now it's like I'm hoping that through these, through these, through this channel, through these videos, through these conversations, that somebody uh, will find hope, whether they find it today in 2023, or or maybe they found a little bit of it last year in 2022, or maybe next year, or, or or the year after. I don't know. I just hope that at least some somebody will take something from this, hopefully positive, and if it's negative. Put it in the comments, man. I would love to hear um, any any constructive criticism or maybe you got some hate words for me. That's cool too. I probably won't respond to those, but you know, it's kind of, I, I kind of, I like, I'm always, uh, you know, trying to improve a process, trying to improve the way I talk, I speak, trying to improve the message that I'm carrying. I'm always trying to improve, not necessarily to, because, you know, at every comment or at every word or every command, but because I, I, I do want to be, I want to be a benefit to, to you guys. So let's get started. Today is May 23rd. And if y'all remember, those of you, oh, by the way, those, those, I'm, I think I have like seven subscribers now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with me, right? Because if you've been with me all year, you've known that I've been through some stuff. We've been through some stuff, right? And some stuff was really, really good, really positive and lots of fun. And some stuff was hard. I mean, you guys have seen me cry, shout, laugh, stand up, sit down, long hair, short hair, messed up hair, slick back hair. I mean, you guys have seen me go through a lot uh, over the past year. And thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for hanging in there with me. One of the most important things that I like to share when I talk about, you know, life and I talk about our journeys is that the really cool thing about my life today is that no matter what, I don't have to drink. I mean, like before it used to come from a different perspective, you know, from maybe somebody telling me, Chris, you don't have to drink today. You really don't have to drink. Uh, but coming uh, today, I'm coming from a space like, man, I don't have, I don't need to numb anything. There's nothing I need to numb. There's nothing I need to feel different about. There's nothing that um, that I feel like I can't handle, right? And is there some some deep, some stuff kind of still um, in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit that I'm grieving or going through? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's the truth. It is, there's something, there's, there's a little bit of stuff going on there. But even with that, I don't, I'm not like looking for something to numb that pain not anything that's going to harm me, right? Like drugs or alcohol or other people or whatever, food, anything that's going to actually harm me. I'm not looking for that as a solution. Today, I'm looking for the strength that comes through the recovery, through the 12-step program that I'm in. I'm looking to my higher power, who I choose to call God. I'm looking to meditation. I'm looking to other podcasts you know there's some really really good podcasts out there that have really helped me in these last few months and and even though let me let me just say and even though i'm listening to really good podcasts and getting better i'm still going to things because it's new stuff and um, this new stuff 
looks like old stuff. But it's new because I haven't had, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't have these experiences in the last couple of years, right? You know, as most of you know, I've been single. I've been on the upward path from being almost homeless to not having any money whatsoever to actually having something today. I mean, I'm, I'm right here. I'm looking, I have a whole bag of chips here today, right here in the presence. I have dryer sheets today. I have another bag of chips over there. I have two bags of chips and dryer sheets. Like, okay, those are luxuries, right? Necessities are like, I mean, they're food, but I don't need a bag of chips. Maybe I need some vegetables, which I, we do have. We have them there in the refrigerator. Maybe you need some meat, it's in the refrigerator. Maybe I need some canned goods, they're in the pantry, right? But all the extras that I have, like chocolate chip cookies, pizza, you know, looking around, dryer sheets. I mean, that stuff is luxury items to me. So I'm, I've, I'm, I'm very blessed. I feel very, very blessed and very grateful. Um, so let's get into our, into our, <clears throat> into our reading for today, right? So today is May twenty third, and I just like it, light, it lightens it. How can I say it? It brightens my spirit inside when I say that. And all today I was so excited. I woke up so excited today. Like something was gonna something new was gonna happen, right? Which is the same feeling I had a year ago today. I was like, something is gonna happen. Something good's gonna happen. And it just it would not leave me alone. It was like, Chris, your YouTube channel, your YouTube channel, your YouTube channel, your YouTube all day was like your YouTube channel, your YouTube channel. And I was like, okay, but how am I gonna do it? It was like daily reflections, daily reflections, daily reflections. I'm like, okay, so I started this channel out of obedience, out of obedience to to the, you know, to the Holy Spirit or, or to God that I, you know, my my conception. God is I understand him, right? Uh as, out of obedience to him, I started this channel because I I felt like um it was time. So uh let's see, let's see what let's, let's read, okay? Let, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read. Um so this book, I say let's read, even though I'm really reading, but you can get this book. It's not just for, you know, people in Alcoholics Anonymous. It's for anybody can buy this. You could probably go to, um, uh, maybe they might have it at Barnes and Nobles or any bookstore. Maybe uh, sometimes I've, I've, I've picked some of these up at a thrift shop, thrift shops. Anytime, any, when I go to a thrift shop, I go to the, the bookstore, the books, and I find for anything recovery, if it's an AA book, a 12 and 12, a Daily Reflections, a Nashville sees it, uh, something from Grapevine or Lavinia, whether they're in Spanish or English, I look for them because those books, I could buy them at a thrift store for like $2, one or $2, sometimes $3, five, even if I pay $5, it's still cheaper than buying these brand new and those, and I could just give those away, right? I, can give, I mean, I give brand new ones away too, but those man you pay a dollar from and you just like hey somebody needs one newcomer or an old timer maybe somebody just needs a book just give it to them boom and it makes carrying the message so much more fun too and easier so i i um when i go to thrift shops i'll go to the bookstore and see what they got so you can find this one probably anywhere you buy books it's called daily reflections and right underneath here it says uh, this book of reflections by AA members for AA members. Some of y'all have heard me um, refer to it as people in recovery by people in recovery, right? For people in recovery by people in recovery because this particular book was, was you know, was um, from Alcoholics Anonymous, but it could help you do anything. It could help you if you're, an, uh, you know, maybe you're an NA, maybe you're an overeater, maybe you're overthinker maybe you're you're in debt you're in debtors it'll help you this book will help anybody anybody who reads it will get blessed by this book um so and just saying that this word came into as like okay anybody who reads this is going to be blessed by by this book but it's an acquired taste i will say that because i I really, really use this book 
in the beginning of my recovery, I used it to keep my mind off of alcohol and drugs and stuff I couldn't control like relationships and to put my mind into a more positive zone, something, uh, something else to reflect on besides that, you know, instead of reflecting on probation, I was reflecting on my spiritual health. Instead of reflecting on a powerless relationship, I was reflecting on helping the newcomer. Instead of reflecting uh, on like, I've been left out, I can live, reflect on the the creative flow of God's world, right? Those are the, some of the topics that we've talked about in this book. Now, later on in recovery, it wasn't something, it was just like, um, we got to read that every day. You know, it was kind of like, uh, but now I, I like this book so much that it's part of my daily living. It's part of my daily life. Like I read it every day. I might not make a video every day, but I read it every day. So, and I'm going to continue reading it every day, mostly because and more shall be revealed, but mostly because I'm writing it into my life. I'm I'm writing it into my life. That is becoming my, this is gonna become one of my, this is what I do every day. For some people, it's the Bible. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna read the Bible every morning. For some people, it could be something on Buddhism or tarot cards or whatever. Whatever your flavor, right? Whatever your God, your conception of God is, whatever is helping you heal, whatever is helping you get through your day to day without picking up uh, those, uh, you know, those behaviors, those old behaviors that get us into a lot of trouble. Whatever's helping you, whatever that is, whatever you're serving that's working, that I'm pretty sure there's literature behind it. So as some of y'all have committed to reading those books for however many minutes in the day or however many minutes in the night, I have committed to reading this book um, on the daily. I have written it into my daily, so, <clears throat> so I'm really uh, grateful to to dive into it from a different from a different perspective, right? So here we go. Today is May twenty third, and this, the title of our entry is called Spiritual Health. When the spiritual malady is overcome, we straighten out mentally and physically. My God, Alcoholics Anonymous, page sixty four. It is very difficult for me to come to terms with my spiritual illness because of my great pride, disguised by my material successes and my intellectual power. Intelligence is not incompatible with humility, provided I place humility first. To seek prestige and wealth is the ultimate goal for many in the modern world. To be fashionable and to seem better than I really am is a spiritual illness. To recognize and to admit my weaknesses is the beginning of good spiritual health. It is a sign of spiritual health to be able to, to ask God every day to enlighten me, to recognize his will and to have the strength to execute it. My spiritual health is excellent when I realize that the better I get, the more I discover how much help I need from others. God, how apropos, right? I say that a lot because there's, most of them are. But going into this last year, right? Looking back uh, when, the, when, the, when the Data Reflections with Chris started, the journey, right? I didn't have some of the stuff that I have today, right? So... I acted out of obedience to start this YouTube channel, not realizing then what I'm reading today, realizing what I realize now. Asking God every day to enlighten me, to recognize his will and to have the strength to execute it. Him, you know, me being like, okay, God, what do you want to do today? And he's like, start YouTube channel. I'm like, what? Like YouTube channel. I'm like, oh man, 
like, you too gentle, you too gentle, you too gentle. I was like, okay, but, but how, like, what, what, what context, what, what are we going to do? And, and he's like, data reflection, data reflection, data reflection. And I did have this thought in 2020 during the, during the pandemic, because other people were making, uh, you know, recovery videos. And I was like, man, I would love to get on, I would love to start a recovery uh, YouTube channel, right? And I would like to use a daily reflection, but I was like, eh, man, man, never mind, never mind that you're 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 not there yet, right? So it was something that I really, I always really wanted, and I never felt like it was time or like like I was good enough, right? So reading this today and says, and it says, and have the strength to execute it. So. Besides courage, right? I need strength to execute this channel. I needed it to execute this channel, which I believe was his will. It was it was it was his will for me, and he, it was his will for for others, right? Who are watching, man. I hope I'm, I hope I can bless somebody uh, with this with this video, with any other of my two hundred and something videos that I have on YouTube. Um, and I wasn't. I wasn't seeking prestige or, or wealth, right? <laughs> it's hard. To, it's not hard to make money on YouTube, but I don't know how easy it would be to make it with seven um, seven followers. But that's okay. I, everybody starts somewhere. I'm I'm good to be starting there. I'm very I'm very grateful. And it says that you know, it's intelligence is not compa incompatible with humility. I love this. I love this part of the of the of the big book, provided I, I place humility first. So it's okay for me to know a lot. It's okay for me to be smart. It's not saying, hey, if you're smart, you're um, you're too good. No, no, no. Well, it's saying that if you're smart, you might think you're too good. And there's nothing wrong with being smart, but for me, you know, to make it in, in recovery, I had to become teachable. I had to not know everything. I had to get to a place where it's like, okay, putting my guard down. I, I know nothing about alcoholism. I know nothing about 12 steps. I don't know anything about God or higher power. I don't even know anything about myself. I don't know who I am. I've been drunk the last seven years, consistently from the when I picked up that drink at 20, I stayed drunk till 27. So it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't enough for me to know what I knew, right? To be a really, to know a lot of math, man. I used to take pride in my math. I, I realized today on a text message, oh, I probably don't know how to read. I do know how to read, but <laughs> I don't know how to slow down and read the words as they're written. I, I skip a lot of stuff. I don't know. So, um, so I, uh, but I was always, I have always been really good at math. And I thought, oh man, I'm good at math. And I, I, I mean, that was like my trophy. That was my accolade. That was like, that's what I thrived on. Um, so when other people try to teach me about math, I'll be like, you can't teach me nothing. I know everything. And I would get a lot of stuff wrong. And I couldn't even admit that I was wrong, that I got it wrong, that I didn't know what I was doing. Man, talk about pride. Well, coming in here, man, I realized that the dumber I am, the better off I'm gonna be. And no, I'm not calling myself dumb. I'm not, so hopefully nobody will come at me. I'm not saying that I'm dumb. I'm saying my perspective was that I don't know it all. Will you teach me? And that took a while for me to change because, man, I can remember uh, there was a there was a, a period where I wasn't going to meetings. I wasn't calling my sponsor, working the steps, nothing, nothing. I was just not drinking. You know, they call that being dry. I was just dry. And, um, you know, like a dry drunk, that's what, that's what I was being. And I had this job where I would drive around parts. I would go pick up parts for the, I worked for the parts, parts department in, in the city with the city of San Antonio. And they would send me to these locations. And then this one time they were like, hey, we need you to go right now, Chris, because 
something happened over there and and uh, um you need to go take some parts because he wasn't ready for this like okay okay so i get it right <laughs> and 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 they're like okay but don't go go over there don't go like that go this way and i was like Man, whatever like i've been driving around the city for all these you can't tell me nothing guess what i got lost and i never made it to where that guy was and I was out there for two hours looking for that guy that was just like probably a mile and a half down the road. But because I didn't, wasn't paying attention to where he was, I wasn't paying attention to how to get there, and I wasn't paying attention to nothing because this boy right here thought he knew everything. He pictured in his head, he's just like, oh yeah, I know, I know how to get there. And they were trying to tell me, and I was like, no, 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 no. You don't gotta tell me, man. You, you, man, you don't know about me, right? I remember coming back and um, and my boss, right? I said, ma'am, she goes, you got lost, didn't you? And I said, yeah, I got lost. She goes, and she goes, you're like, you're lucky, you fixed it. He fixed it. He's back already. I was like, okay, thank you. I was like, man, thank God. Thank God he was back already and that he had it fixed, but I remember that time because it was a good example of what happens in Chris's life when he's not open to direction, when he's not open to suggestion, when he's not open to other ideas. And was that the was that the last time that happened? No. No, because Chris had to like go and get some more beating, he emotional beating, you know. Um some um, emotional bottoms, spiritual bottoms, mental bottoms, where it was like, <sighs> I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I can't take it. I don't. I can't take how miserable I become. I can't take how isolated I become because nobody wants to be my friend. Nobody wants to talk to me. Nobody likes to know it all. It's true. It's really true. People like. If you have a lot of information, people will come to you and ask you for information. So having information and being a know-it-all is not the same thing. And I was like a know-it-all because the truth is I didn't have information. I just thought I knew everything. So people were like turned off by it. And they were like, mm -mm, I don't want to hang out with Chris, man. He's bitter. He's like neurotic, thinks he knows everything, won't take suggestion. He's rude. He's compulsive. You know, I was those things. I was all those things. And thank God, man. Thank God for God. And, and if you have a higher power that's not God, thank your higher power for your higher power, man. I could not have got, I could not have gotten sober one if I didn't have some divine intervention. And two, I could not be sober today. If, I, if there wasn't something that I was continuing to look for. Because we talk about mental health. We talk about emotional health. We talk about physical health. Today's reading is about spiritual health. It's like, what am I doing to build up my spiritual life? Am I building it up? Am I doing anything? Is it staying healthy or is it going to the way of the dodo? And that does happen to me. It just happened to me like two weeks ago. I got unbalanced. Nobody's fault. It was nobody's fault. I'm not here to blame anybody. But today I realized that some of the that the stuff that happens to me is a result of something that I did previously prior to that so my mental breakdown or my mental unease was not caused by any other person except myself because I stopped doing what it takes to keep me spiritually healthy I stopped uh, getting on my knees and pray I you don't have to get on your knees and pray no nowhere it says that but I do I love doing that that's like my way of telling my higher power i'm in this like i love you like i'm right i'm right this is i'm in like i'm in jesus i'm in with you man so i love getting on my knees and praying 
Well, I messed up my knee. So I couldn't get on. It was too painful to get on my knees, right? So I I said, man, God, you know, man, it's too painful. I'm just going to sit here. So I went from sitting there to sitting there and putting on my shoes, to putting on my shoes and running out the door, to just running out the door. And where did the, where did the God thing, I mean, like, where did the prayer, the, 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 our, my time with God, where did that go? It just it, it went out the window. And then, so I'm like driving over here. It's like, ew, I forgot to get on my knees. Oh my God, I didn't even sit there for like five minutes. I just put on my shoes and left. Always running, 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 running. And first couple of days was okay. First week was okay. But after a while, it, you know, I can't do this alone. I can't do this. Yes, my little spiritual bank was empty. It was depleted. So some stuff got messed up. And uh, I'm not proud of it. I'm not happy about it. Two days ago, I was hoping I wish I could turn back time. Today, I'm not. Today, I'm in a different space. One thing about my spiritual health that I've had to work on is forgiving myself. Right? So sometimes in prayer, I'll be like, God, forgive me for my sins. Man, I pray so-and-so forgives me for saying that. I pray so-and-so forgives me for not being there. I hope so-and-so forgives me for lying, you know. And then I say, and God, help me to forgive myself. Because I was asking for forgiveness from everybody. I was even offering forgiveness to other people. But I could not forgive myself. And that was like my torment. That stuff would like bring me down so fast and so hard. More than any other thing that anybody else could do or say to me, right? So, part of my spiritual health was forgiving myself. And I said that because... Two days ago, I had to do that. I had to forgive myself. It's like, okay, Chris, you can't take back what you said. You, you pray that that person will forgive you. And maybe things will get better. But time's up. You got to forgive yourself. You've been beating yourself about this long enough. You beat yourself up way too long. We're not going to live like that. You are not a victim. You have the power within you. At any given moment, you can get up and go do, go out there and do something for yourself. Stay busy. Let's go. Let's go. You have a solution. Go find yourself a newcomer, man. Go, go, go order your stuff. Go, you know, because I'm, I'm having to order. Man, I want to, I'm going to share something with you here in a minute, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited about a new chapter in my life. And I could get stuck in uh, my unforgiveness of myself would get me so stuck in my head, telling me I don't deserve what's about to happen, that I don't deserve to to do this, that I, that I don't have nothing, that I'm not creative, that I don't have enough money. I mean, like, oof, unforgiveness is is my, it's one of my, it's one of my torments. It's probably, it's probably my biggest torment, right? So... Getting to that point where it's like, okay, Chris, this is you're done here. You've already been loathing too much. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get up. You're not a victim. You have to forgive yourself, man. You messed up. Okay. You learned. You learned something, right? And I'm like, yeah. It's like, okay. Well, let's let's keep it moving. Give yourself the same forgiveness. I was I was telling myself, give yourself the same forgiveness that you want that person to give you. And then multiply about a hundred times. Man, you're worth it. And I remember um, shortly after that, my phone, my phone just died out of nowhere. I was like, wow, oh, that's weird. I mean, I turned it off because it was doing some weird stuff, but I wasn't able, well, I was not able to turn it, turn it back on. So all that day, I was without my phone, and I wasn't freaking out. I was at peace. You know, wasn't I couldn't listen to my podcast or music or be on the phone texting or calling or nothing. And that silence was so powerful. I felt like um I think flatlines is is not the correct word, but 
So before that happened, I felt my life was like this. And then my phone cut off and I felt like my life was like this. Right, so then I come home, I get off of work, I come home, I take a shower, I'm like, man, I, I probably have enough time to go to Sprint. Even if it means I'm gonna be late for my commitment, right? My service commitment. So then I go to Sprint store and I tell him, while I'm talking, he's pushing buttons and, he's, and I see the little Apple sign. I'm like, my God, how'd you do that? He's like, oh yeah, just go like volume up and down, then the power button, hold it till the little apple comes out. I'm like, wow. And in that moment, I felt like my life went from like this to like this. Like it just, I felt like, I felt like something just get lifted off. Like something negative fell off and something positive started to come in to fill me up. I was like, whoa. And it wasn't at church and he wasn't praying. He just fixed my phone. And then I got like a really cool message. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I my my niece texts me. So I have two nieces. One I have not heard from her for a while now. I mean, I text her, and um, she doesn't ever text back. She might not have a phone. Right? I don't know. I haven't heard from her. <clears throat> but my other niece, I hear from her a lot, and and uh, <clears throat> you know, she texted me that she was in the hospital, which I got worried about, but she's doing pretty good she's safe man she's in the hospital they're taking care of her and, and uh, she's being they're feeding her so so i'm very grateful that she's in the hospital even though usually that's a bad thing right just like jail but i i feel like i know that they're safe and they're and she is she's safe we and and we've been texting more we, we started texting again so that that really really was cool it's cool uh, but also then I got a, a, a text from another guy who's in recovery and he started texting me. He's like, look, I'm really excited about what you're doing and I'm telling everybody about it. And as soon as I can get there, I'm going to get there. He says, I'm going to be there with you on June 4th. And and, uh, and I'm excited to be a part of it. And I'm like, wow. And I thought this guy was like mad at me, right? I thought this guy was mad at me. So... So then I get those two text messages and I go to this com service commitment on time and I print my, I mean, like, I feel like my life has just been my emotional state, my, my mental health, my spiritual health, my physical health. It feels like it's on the up right now. And. I don't know what else to call it, but like a miracle. You know, I don't believe like there's big miracles or small miracles. I just think that there's miracles. I think for myself, or I'm talking about myself, <clears throat> that if I say it's a big miracle, it's because I sh did not expect anything like that. And sometimes if I put, if I say a uh, small miracle, it's like, well, I didn't, I didn't quite um, deserve that, but I'm really glad I can't, can't, God came through, right? So they're the same. A miracle is a miracle. Um, so I I believe that was a miracle. I believe that something happened with me. From the time I decided that I was going to get on my knees, whether my whether they hurt or not, I remember that morning thinking, God, it's been too long, and I I can't do it alone anymore. Um, I'm going to get on my knees, even if it hurts me, even if it makes me cry, I'm going to get on my knees. And I did. And I got on my knees and all that other stuff happened. And, and I just felt like, I almost felt like I was on the outside looking in because I wasn't emotionally attached to anything that was happening. I was just like watching it happen. And I was, I felt real serene and peace in my heart and joy and love. And uh, since then, a lot of good things have happened. It's like, man, Chris, you know that you know what works, man. Why do you start trying to do it by yourself? Why do you start taking? Why do you think it's okay to start taking over, man? Like, dude, get out of the way. Let let God be God. You just go be Chris. And Chris was like thinking he was not cool anymore because he messed up. But Chris is, man, I'm, 
I love Chris. I love myself. I think I'm really cool. I think I'm fun to be with. I think I'm funny. I think I'm smart. I think that I'm creative. I love doing things. Um, I think I'm successful. Not successful like I thought I would be, right? As far as like the money. I really thought, when I was a kid, I thought I was gonna be an accountant. I thought I was gonna be an accountant. And that I was going to make a lot of money for other for other businesses. And at the same time, I was going to make myself a lot of money. So I really thought that's what I was going to be when I grow up. And I'm not that. I, I, don't, I don't think I, I don't know if I would like that or not, but I'm not that, right? But I feel successful in what I do, and that's in recovery. And so some of you who know my home group uh, is Grupo Montopolis here in Austin, right? Here in Austin, Texas. But we're actually gonna start a new group. And it's called the Grupo, uh, the name of the group is called Tercera Tradicion. And that's gonna be in Dripping Springs, which is closer than Grupo Montopolis. But I've always felt like, man, we need it. We don't have a Spanish speaking meeting out here. Let's, let's start. I wanna start one. So, some other stuff was happening in the background. So I started looking for spaces to for rent. And I saw a really nice one. I was like, oh, I would love that space. It had parking, it had, uh, the space was, you know, not too big, not too small, but it had what I felt like I needed for a group at all phases of, 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 of its life. So I, I, so I started, but then it got rented out like super fast. Somebody got it, I was like, oh, okay. I said, well, I'll just keep my eyes open. I looked at some other stuff and it just didn't feel right. I was like, mm, kind of want some were too expensive, some were too small. Some um, they either didn't have enough parking or, you know, cause I think about like, what is a, what does a year look like in, in, in AA with, with the linguistic district? What does a year look like? What do their events look like? What happens at certain times of the year? What things do they like to do? So I was looking for a space that had all that. And um, after about, eight, after about I, I think it's been like nine months. And man, people have like really discouraged me from doing this. In the beginning, they were like, Chris, man, you can't just go over there. And then you come over here and you want to start your own group. Man, you don't even know how any of this works. And, and I was like, that's messed up. But then at the same time, I was like, no, they're right. They're right, I don't know how it works. So I started going to their meetings and I started learning everything. And I also started learning every, how they do things over there. It's in their languages, what books they like to read, how they like to do certain things, what kind of stuff happens and, um, and what kind of stuff doesn't happen, right? Because they are a little different than the Anglo groups. So I don't know where, man, this, this opportunity came and uh, I'm very, very grateful. This location has everything that I need and want uh, for a group because it has plenty of space. It's got a gym, it's got a cafeteria and it's got a, um, a meeting, a really nice meeting space. So I'm really, really grateful that I'm gonna be part of a new group and a Spanish speaking group in Dripping Springs, Texas. So my new my new home group is gonna be called Tercera Tradicion. So I say that because there's no there's no CEOs in, in Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, there's only trusted servants. And for this trusted servant right here to be a part of opening that new group, man, I feel like <sighs> I feel blessed. I feel like, wow, of all the things that I'm doing wrong, I think I'm doing one thing right. <laughs> I'm doing something right. Or maybe they just wanted the most desperate case, but I doubt it. I don't think that's what it was. I really do not feel like they asked me to do it because one, I can't say no, or two, I'm very desperate. Neither one of that, neither one of those is not true for me today because today I can't say no and today I'm not desperate. And I'm really, really grateful for the spiritual 
journey that I'm on, for realizing how important my spiritual health is, and for really keep trying to remind myself to remain teachable and that I don't know it all. And I'm grateful that I don't know it all. I really like to learn. I, I forgot that I like to learn, but I um, that's another thing I'm learning about myself is that I like to learn. I like to learn new things. Am I always willing to read the book or love? No, but man, when I want to know something today, um, just on that topic today, I did a, a brake job on my car and, and I hadn't done one of those in a long time. And I forgot that I know how to do that. <laughs> but at the dealership, they wanted 1200 and that was too steep for my pocket. So I had to find a cheaper way. I went to, I tried two other mechanic shops over the weekend. One canceled on me, the other one said 900, 1000. I was like, mm. okay. I said, well, you know how to do this, Chris. Just, just, just do it. And I spent time uh, researching how to do it. So I like to learn. Do I learn on other people's timelines or the way other people would like me to learn? Unfortunately, I try. But for me, I kind of have to do it my way, I guess. It's not my way or the highway, but I mean my way by like, the way I've learned lately that Chris learns or that Chris functions or that Chris, um, what motivates Chris, right, to do certain things. So those things that I'm learning about myself, which have totally changed in the last six months because I wasn't aware of my mental, my mental health till about six months ago and I realized, okay, this... This, I think it felt like a documentary, but at the, at, at the same time it was a show. And it's called um, Atypical. And I started to realize that the main character in that show, that him and I were very much alike. Even from the beginning words, from the very first thing he said, many people think I don't have empathy, but I do. And I was like, oh my God, that's me. That's like... I'm pretty sure that's the very first line of the series, but I'm, but I can, I'm, I might have to look that up to come back and let y'all know if that's true or not. But on the very first line of that series, he says, people think that I don't have empathy, but I do. And I was like, oh no, he was probably talking about something else, but that was the first line that stood out for me. And I said, that is so true. People think that I don't empathize. But when I know what they're going through, then I, I'm like, oh, okay. Then then I can feel my heart breaking. I can feel my tears. I can feel, you know, like, man, oh, I've been there. And you just want to, I just want to hold them. So I do have empathy. And I, and I, and I comprehend certain, a lot of things and I read it, you know, but I just do it at a different pace. So... So I'm grateful that I learned that about myself because I was always so hard on myself about that. And when I saw that show, I was like, man, Chris, you're just, it's just you, man. Stop trying to be like everybody else. You're freaking awesome, dude. They made, they made a whole series about people like you, a person like you who learns different, who understands different, who's motivated differently, who... Who doesn't mean to be who he is, but is making the best of it. I think that's what I got from that show more than anything. It's like some people on the spectrum, they can't, it's, it's, not, it's irreversible, right? But they can learn how to live very functional lives. So I felt like that was me. It's like, okay, Chris, maybe you understand everything that's going on. Maybe you had, didn't have guidance before, but now that you have some kind of clue that where you might be mentally, 
you could learn how to live a, a successful life even with that and i remember just having that whole shift in my spirit like yeah that's true i can and i and i've been doing that here lately and i did forget for like a second because i remember saying like man i forgot i forgot that i'm that that i just i don't think like other people i don't react like other people i don't act like other people i don't do things at other people's pace and i'm not trying to be rude it's just who i am and i can't uh, i mean i can i can be different but first i gotta understand where where i am and if i want to be different i can be but folks with that being said if you don't want to drink your drug today you don't have to if you don't want to lie today, you don't have to. If you want to go to bed early today, you can. If you're feeling alone and hopeless, I just want you to know you're not. You're not alone. You may be hopeless, but you're not alone. Hopelessness is something that I think is spiritual. But if you want to hang out with other people who are there with you or have been, find yourself a tribe. Find yourself a group, whether it be A A N A C A, slot, whatever. Find your tribe. If you want to go to church, go. If you want to go to the Buddhist center, go. The Zen center, go. If you want to go uh, hang out with people uh, in treatment, go. If you want to find your tribe, man, you are not alone. I under I I understand hopelessness. <laughs> It's like a plague. Like sometimes it's just like out to kill me, man, and then out to kill those around me, um, because it's easily contagious. But so is recovery. Get yourself somewhere into recovery. You can anybody who wants to message me on my comment section or my DMs, private message me, whatever you want. I'm Chris. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Chris Contreras, um, and um, Instagram too. So, if you feel alone, you're not. And I'm sorry you feel that way. And I say that because so many times, told, when I was in my hopeless state of mind, so many times people try to be like, you're not alone, Chris. I would have, we would have parties and we'd have like 20, 25 people there. And all my friends, right? Some of Marty's too, but mostly my friends. And still feel so uncomfortable, so lonely, so hopeless, so different. I would be like, man, I don't fit here. And they were all my people. And I wouldn't, I couldn't, I, something inside me says, I don't belong here. I don't fit in. And that, that was all spiritual. It was all spiritual. When I started to connect with the higher power, when I started to live a spiritual life or a life lived on a spiritual basis, my hopelessness started leaving. My negativity leaving. My loneliness leaving. My abandonment issues leaving. Me thinking that nobody loves me, leaving or doesn't understand, leaving. Because what I learned that in these meetings, people understand me. It's the only place I have ever felt understood is in a room of Alcoholics Anonymous. Because there, I, I go, I go, I go. You walk into any meeting and you will find somebody sharing something that you're going through, and it's true because I know it's true. It's. Anywhere I go, somebody's talking about, it feels like they're talking about me, but they're not. They're talking about themselves, but we have very similar experiences and sometimes very similar hurts and very deep wounds, similar. 
So when I came down, I mean, I felt understood. I felt understood. I felt um, embra I was embraced. They offered me a solution. They didn't force it on me, but they said, if you want what we have and are willing to go to any lane to get it, then you're ready. But they didn't say, oh, you better be ready. You got to get out. Or they didn't say, oh, you're not ready and you must leave. They never, they never, ever have ever told me that. And I'm so grateful because somebody like me needs that. I needed that. I needed that. So, folks, it's getting long. It's getting late today. Um, as I mentioned before, today is one year anniversary of Daily Reflections with Kit with Chris, May 23rd. Uh, I'm very grateful to be on this journey with you guys. I hope that I've helped somebody. If I haven't, leave me a message. Tell me, yeah. Tell me whatever you want. Um, and keep watching, okay? Keep watching. I might turn a new leaf. I might actually help you next time. Keep watching. Um, but thank you for my thank you for my subscribers. Thank you for those who view me. Um, and I love you guys so so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.